Hey everyone, Kirk Norbury here again, and today I'm going to go through Lightroom CC again. And in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at the new HDR merge feature of Lightroom CC. So I've just got these images here taken down at Turnbury, which is on the Ayrshire coast. I took these about a week or so ago, and this is seven exposures off the coast, and just to try and get you know a full dynamic range of the scene and I, got, I actually took these images to test it and for this video as well so just have a quick look through the images so you can see there's a lot different exposures lots different dynamic range and there's a lot of movement as well so to do the HDR the best thing to do is select them all so I usually hold shift, click one, click the other, and then you want to right click, go to photo merge, then HDR. So it'll just generate a HDR preview for us now, which will just take a few moments. So that's the image completed there. So we'll go through the settings on the right hand side. It's quite minimal, it's quite basic settings for HDR. But this does benefit from with a lot of good features compared to other software and I'll go through them in a, minute, a second. So the first thing uh, I select uh, the auto align. So it just aligns all the images on top of each other. So you can get you know, horizons the same place rocks in the same place etc. Now the next feature is the auto tone which the Lightroom applies its own HDR sort of settings to it and its own preset. Um, I'll show you what that looks like in a second but the first thing I'll go through is the de-ghost. Now de-ghosting is when you're doing a HDR several images might have moving elements in it so grass, trees, clouds, water so this will try and eliminate them by picking a good frame to use uh, to try and eliminate that sense of movement and anything that can get in the, in the way. So looking at this image, you know it's already selected high, which is probably what I would have selected. And if you just click this bit here, show de ghost overlay, it will show you actually where it is applying this effect. So in this one it's all the way across the middle where clouds are moving and the main uh, water is. And if you just click it to none, I'll show you what happens. So in this one it's harder to see, but if you zoomed in onto this there will be movement of the clouds and that. It depends how qu quick you did your HDR shot, but in some cases uh, I have seen where well, it looks like there's two sets of clouds right next to each other overlapping and it just looks horrible. So I'm just going to put that back to high. Now the next thing is the auto tone. I tend not to click this and edit the image myself but I'll show you what it'll do. So this is Lightroom adding its own preset, its own sort of HDR look. In most cases it pulls the highlight slider all the way to the left and the shadows all the way to the right which in some cases doesn't really work uh, sometimes it does look a bit overprocessed, a bit gritty so I tend to unclick this and leave it like this so it looks like a basic sort of image but what you've got in here is a raw file this will be a DNG, not a TIFF, not a JPEG like you get over software this will be a raw file so there's a lot more information there, so it's brought all these Im images together for a very high dynamic image. This is brilliant for editing. So I'm happy with that. I'm just going to click merge and it will render the final image. So there we have it. It's rendered the file, which is this one here. Yeah, there's a dot. DNG file, so that's a complete raw file. 
And so I'm just going to go into quickly edit it and show you the sort of dynamic range of this shot. So I just press D to develop. And now you can see. So this, the thing that I do to check the uh, exposure to see how much dynamic range it has is by just moving the exposure slider back and forth. And you can see in that sky there is a lot more detail there. Usually with this file, you know, I start going to about a stop under and the, the blown out highlights will stay that way. But in this case, I can keep going, keep going to about three stops and the amount, you know, information restored in there is really, really good. So I'll, I edit this way, the way I normally do, you know, for the HDR it tends to just do something like that, which is okay, but it looks a bit gritty. So what I tend to do is I use the exposure slider to expose for the foreground, and then I use a, a graduated filter to expose for the sky. So I'll just show you how I do that. So I just bump up the foreground to about there, so that's about 1.4 stops over. And then I grab the graduated filter and it'll be about just about a stop under like so. So let's see how that works and I just drag that down and then once I've got it in and got it in position I can start adjusting it. And I can start playing around with the exposure because I've got all that information to play with. So with this image I'm seeing I'm happy with how this surrounding area is, I'm happy with down here. Probably about there a little better. Uh just strain it up a little bit. Now do. This area is still quite bright. And to be honest, I don't want to use the greedy uh, graduated filter to adjust that. So the best thing is to get the brush, one stop under, and I'm just going to paint in the area. I'm just going to raise that bit there. Try uh, minus 1.5, see how that looks. Yeah, that's too much. So just about on there. Um, it just means I've got a bit more control over the exposure. So it, um, this is a brief look into the HDR module. I would edit this shot a bit more, play around with it, see what I can do. But this gives you a good idea of the dynamic range that you can capture by using this software. And I, the best thing about it is being able to edit a complete raw file from your exposures. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you found it helpful, please leave a like. And if you want to see more of my videos, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you later.